Uh, good morning church, my name is Adam, uh, I am on Audacious College and I'm super hyped uh, to be able to uh, deliver your uh, daily devotion today. Uh, so first off, before we start, let's pray. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for, for bringing us all together here today. We, uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that whoever is listening, Lord, receives blessings from these words, Lord, and encouragement, and they're able to go and pass it on to uh, their friends and their colleagues, Lord, and that they have a fantastic start to the day, Lord Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Brilliant. So we'll kick uh, we'll kick straight in. So uh, what I was really interested, actually, as I was reading uh, the book of Philemon, which we've been learning about over the last couple of months. Uh, and it's been really interesting to read about the story uh, of Onesimus, uh, Paul and Philemon. Now, if you don't know this story, um, it is really interesting. So Onesimus was actually a slave under Philemon. Uh, and what happened uh, is that he escaped. Uh, so he ran away uh, and ran into the Apostle Paul, which was absolutely brilliant because what happened is, is he helped him turn to Christ. Uh, now, what essentially happened at this point was Paul um, could have just uh, allowed him to, to go off on his merry ways. But in fact, what he actually did, and this is the best part, was he turned him around and sent him back to Philemon. Now, some people would probably be thinking, oh, what's he done? Like, he's, he's just escaped. He's a slave and he's escaped. Uh, and this person is a Christian uh, now. But what happened actually uh, in reality was uh, Onesimus had actually stolen um, from Philemon uh, and then ran off. So he has escaped and he's gone, ran into Paul and Paul has sent him back, but he's not sent him away. He sent him uh, back to Philemon. And what he has asked Philemon, and we'll actually go into the Bible right now, um, is he's actually asked him to forgive him uh, and to open the doors to him. So uh, in Philemon chapter 10, uh, sorry, in uh, chapter 1 verse 10, uh, it states this, uh, while here in jail, fathered a child, so to speak. And it goes on uh, all the way up to, to verse 20. And here is he, and here he is, hand carrying this letter, Onesimus. He was useless to you before, now he's useless to both of us. I'm sending him back to you, but it feels like I'm cutting off my right arm in doing so. I wanted in the worst way to keep him here as you're standing to help him while I'm in jail for the message. But I didn't want him to do anything behind your back. Make you do a good deed that you hadn't willingly agreed to. Maybe it's all for the best that you lost him for a while. You're getting back now for good. And no mere slaves this time, but a true Christian brother. That's what he was to me. He'll be even more to you. So essentially what he's done is he's sent him back uh, as somebody who has um, converted to the way and he has um, been blessed by the Lord. Uh, and chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 17 to 20 goes on like this. So if you still consider me a comrade in arms, welcome him back as you would. If he damaged anything or owes you anything, chalk it up to my account. This is my, this is my personal signature, Paul, and I stand behind it. So he is taking any credit. So he's saying, go back. This is this is all I'm saying. I'm telling you now. Uh, I'm telling you now, Onesimus, go back to Philemon. And he's saying to Philemon, doesn't matter what he's done now. I'll take the blame. This is what I'm going to do. If you if you break stuff, that's up to him. Uh, I'll, I'll pay. I'll do anything. Uh, and I think that's really amazing that someone has uh, escaped and someone has gone away. Not into Christ. They've bumped into an Apostle Paul and Paul has helped them, has helped release Christ unto them and has helped show them that. And I think that's really amazing in a society as such as today. This is a bit like with your parents when you were young. Uh, and I certainly remember with my parents. And I hope this, uh, I hope that people maybe in youth or kids actually are listening to this and that they're able to respond. Because essentially what happens is, is you may have fallen out with your mum and you've gone to your dad. Uh, and your dad has said to you, wow, you know, uh, I'll give you a hug and I'll, you know, I'll be your dad. But you still got to go back to your mum. And your mum's got to, you know, your mum's got to give you the blessing as well. Uh, and you've got to understand you've got to listen to your mum. Uh, but essentially, sometimes when we're kids, when we might break something, your dad's like, fine, I'll take that. Or it might be your mum the other way around. It's like, fine, I'll say, I'll tell your dad that I did it. Lots of different scenarios like that, which I think is really cool. Uh, and I'm proud to, to come to a church where uh, so much goes on. Uh, yeah, but in God's eyes, um, you know, we uh, he died for our sins. And I think that's amazing. Whatever we sin, we bring it up to him. And that's what he died for on the cross. You know, thousands of years ago, he died for your sins. He died for you uh, to sin every day. Like the Bible tells us that what we do. Uh, and I think that's amazing. And I think that how fantastic it is uh, to live for a God that will forgive us. And I just think that's amazing. I remember talking to um, Pastor Paul Reed about it. And it's like, well, but if we just keep sinning the same sin, God forgives us. And we make mistakes, but God forgives us. And I think that's amazing. 
I'm going to head off now, um, but I really recommend that you read the book of Philemon. I think it's a really amazing, really inspiring message. Uh, and hopefully you've been able to take something out of this. All right, brilliant. Have a great day, church. See you later.